All right, so here are my NYX eyeshadows. This may look like a strange one because it's in a Z palette, but this is actually their Avant Pop palettes. They have put out three of them. I will show you some pictures here on the screen, but I really didn't care for the organization and I felt like the colors were just a little strange the way they had them laid out in the pan. So I ended up depotting them because I realized that I wanted the colors in kind of sequential order. I guess it's the right way to say it. I really loved the formula of these. They're really soft and buttery and easy to work with. The shimmers don't, you don't need your finger to really make those shimmers look well on your eye. Let me just give you a couple of swatches here. The mattes are super creamy and easy to work with. These shimmer shades are really pretty and I like the variety of tones that you get from some pastels to a really bright silver that I think is stunning on the lid. Um, and then you get some really fun bright pops of color in these palettes as well, both for the colors as well as just kind of loving how they are organized. I am definitely hanging on to this. Two palettes that were that came out in holiday. These were part of kits, I think, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before that at Ulta. It came with an eyeliner and this palette and I think a matte lipstick. Can't unfortunately get these anymore, but these are gorgeous. I love these palettes. I mean, this is just like a fantastically fun neutrals palette that has everything from sort of cool to warm tones in it. And then this has got some amazing, beautiful jewel tones. To me, the formula reminds me a lot of these Avant Pop shadows. In fact, the packaging was actually really similar. I love the pigmentation you get, even from shades that I think are a little more challenging to work with. And it's just got some more kind of interesting mustardy sort of 70s grungy colors as well as like your your yield basic neutral transition shades. So I really do like both these palettes and I'm going to hang on to them because I just think they are unique color combinations and I always feel inspired and I really enjoy the looks I get when I use these two. Probably my favorite NYX palette is the NYX Lid Lingerie. This is super affordable. I think it's $9.99 or nine bucks or something like that. It's just a range of six different um, matte shades but I love the fact that you've got kind of warm shades, cool tone shades, transition, brow bone, two different deepening shades. I mean the number of looks that you can get out of just these six colors and is just amazing. This is a fantastic pairing palette. I have frequently traveled with this. It's very sturdy and I'll just pop a couple of sort of metallic shimmer single potted shadows in a in my little travel bag and then taken this with it. So absolutely lovely. Pigmentation is gorgeous. Feels incredibly buttery and creamy. So yeah, I just, they're, they're beautiful. They're easy to work with. It's just a great palette, I think, to have on hand when you um, need some matte shadows. So love this. And then this is the NYX Ultimate Multi Finish Shadow Palette. This is in the shade Sugar High. I thought this is a really fun concept. So basically they give you a row of mattes, a row of satins, and then a row of like high shine metallics. I do find that these metallics are kind of that thinner formula that really does have a little bit of like texture chunkiness to it. But if you put them over a sticky base or you wet it, what you end up with is something that is like super high shine metallic. So I definitely feel like the texture is maybe not my favorite right out of the pan, but the finished effect you get with these is like blinding. I mean, super stunning. Satins are just nice to have on hand when you don't want that super, super blinding look. I liked the color combo. I liked the fact that the tones were slightly different in the second row than the third. So I don't know, I've made some really pretty looks with this. So unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I am gonna keep all of the NYX eyeshadow palettes that I have. I will admit, I haven't purchased a ton of NYX eyeshadow palettes. Oftentimes the price point and then also the quality of some of them just kind of gets at me. I used to have several of the, what were they, the 16 pan eyeshadow palettes where it was like four, four, and four little squares. I had several of those and I actually ended up decluttering them in my last declutter, um, the one that I deleted the footage from. So I have had palettes from them that I don't like, but at this point I feel like I have honed my collection of NYX ones to the ones that I really do enjoy. Okay, so a table full of e.l.f. eyeshadow palettes. So all these packaging is exactly the same over here. So I will say when you have them in your drawer and I kind of stack them like this, reaching for the correct eyeshadow palette is impossible. And most of the time I end up pulling them all out and having to like 
flip through them card style to figure out which one I was reaching for. All right, let's start over here. So let's look at these two. So these, so these two are their 10 pan palettes that have kind of a range of mattes and shimmers. If I'm being totally honest, these are not my favorite. I don't think the quality is bad in these, don't get me wrong, but they're just not ones that I totally reach for over other palettes in my collection. So this is the Everyday Smoky Eye. I got it because it had a lot of cool toned shades in it and I thought it might be a good smoky palette. It is, but I just don't find myself reaching for it a ton. Swatches here. So like I said, the quality's not bad. I can't complain about any of these. I actually think e.l.f. does a good eyeshadow palette, but this just isn't a section of colors that I'm reaching for a lot. This one here is the Nude Rose Gold palette. This one's not bad. I definitely think it was kind of trying to dupe the Naked palette from Urban Decay. So if you've been wanting the Naked 3 palette, this might be one to consider picking up. It's just, once again, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not reaching for this one. I'm not super inspired by it. This is their Prism Eyeshadow palette. This is in the shade Naked. They used to have three different versions of these, but they've kind of narrowed it down. I think they just have a couple. They may just have this one now on their website. I'm not entirely sure. It is a very sort of creamy, lightweight formula. Kind of reminds me of the way the shimmer shades are in the um, CoverGirl palettes. They're pretty, but I'm just not finding myself reaching for this because it is an all shimmer palette. This is something that I would just reach for if I was needing a lid color. And I have plenty of other single shadows that I like more than that when I want a single shadow. So I do think I'm gonna pass this one on as well. These four are the Mad for Matte palettes. This is the original Mad for Matte. This is Mad for Matte 2, which I think they have renamed. When they launched it was Mad for Matte 2 and now it's like something about summer, I think put it up on the screen. They now have a new name for it. This is the Holy Smokes palette. So this is a interesting sort of grungier, sort of got kind of a 70s grungy vibe to it. And then this is Jewel Pop. This is the newer palette they've released. These are hands down the best matte eyeshadows at the drugstore. They are beautiful to work with. They build up easily. They're not overly dusty or chalky. The color lasts all day. Between this, you've got a really great range of neutrals. You've got fun pops of color. This summer one is absolutely stunning. I love the tones that they picked in here for this. The original Mad for Matte is also fantastic. You've got great neutrals and cool tones in here. Great purple shades, which I think are hard to do in eyeshadows in general, and these actually perform really well. I don't know, I just, I find these easy to work with, easy to blend, got great pigmentation, last a long time on your eye, really go the length and breadth of ranges from colors, from a color perspective. So I don't know, I really like these formulas. I like having these on hand. They're super compact and easy to travel with. So I'm hanging on to all four of these. Uh, last two e.l.f. palettes. This is one that they launched last year. It's called their Shadow Brow and Liner Palette. This one you could definitely use for brows. It's definitely got kind of basic, boring colors. I mean, it was clearly designed to be a brow kind of palette. I did really enjoy this when I had it in my everyday makeup drawer, so I can't knock the performance of it. I do question whether or not I need that when I've got that full range of mattes, just mattes from this range here. This is their chromatic eyeshadow palette. It is in the same packaging, but this one came with a really interesting mix of both kind of satiny shimmer shades and mattes in here. So your matte shades were incredibly creamy. I would argue that the formula in these is even better than the Mad for Matte palettes. If the colors that are matte in here appeal to you, I do think that you're going to be very impressed with the quality of these eyeshadows. The shimmers are good. I don't think that they're the best shimmer eyeshadows I've ever used in my life, but they totally perform. So this is a little more expensive than these smaller sort of 10 pan palettes, but I definitely feel like e.l.f. has made a higher quality, more pigmented, it, it feels a little more luxurious eyeshadow formula, and the pigmentation you get is marketably even better than these, which was already good. So I think I'm gonna pass this one along because I think uh, the shades in here don't have a ton of tonal variety, and I can definitely get that from my original Mad for Matte palette. 
This one I think is pretty unique though, and I am gonna hang on to it. Okay, so here are the Makeup Revolution eyeshadow palettes that I have. One that I know I wanna keep is from Soph X. This is a palette that was out in London for a while, just came over to Ulta a few months ago. It's got the names that she had picked. Soph X is a UK uh, beauty vlogger. I absolutely freaking lutely adore the colors that she picked in here. I just, I think you get the most amazing range of brights and neutrals and cool tones and warm tones. Like it's just, it's such a well thought out palette with such diversity. I mean, you can create so many freaking looks with this. It's unbelievable. The mattes in here are superb. The shimmers are not my favorite. Once again, I don't think Rake of Revolution does the best shimmers out there. I really do need to wet my brush for them but I do like the colors that are in here and I was able to make them work when I did wet them or use my finger. They're just kind of a, I don't know, it's got kind of a slippier texture to them and I don't find that they pick up very easily. They require a lot of building up, but that being said, when you do build them up, they do last and they are really pretty. So um, I, I'm, I can get over the shimmers in here. The mattes are absolutely stunning. I, freaking love what she did with the matte shades super pigmented easy to work with blend like a dream just beautiful quality so definitely keeping uh, this guy one i do think i'm going to pass along this is the makeup revolution reloaded iconic division palette this is the dupe for the subculture i will put my full review of this down below if you want to see this but to be honest of the two palettes i tested drugstore duping subculture this one kind of came in second i much preferred the other palette so i do think i'm going to pass this one along now this is the unicorn love eyeshadow palette it has this completely tacky fuzzy lid on the top and this big bejewel. I mean, it's it's kind of a total cheese ball. Uh, I picked this up just because I thought the color selection was different and maybe a little interesting. I have used this a couple of times. I was not impressed with the performance of these shadows and I don't know, just, I don't know. This one just didn't end up inspiring me the way that I thought it might and I wasn't impressed with the quality of the shadows. So I'm gonna pass this guy along. This is one of the Salvation palettes. This was one where they had a row of mattes down below and then some shimmers up above. I have used this one quite a bit. I've gotten some really pretty looks with it. I kept it in large part because I really loved this plummy purpley shade down here. It really performed well. And then I did like some of the shimmers in here I thought were pretty. I, I mean, once again, I think the shimmers in here perform better than the ones that were in the palettes we've just talked about. I think the formula is slightly different. I just don't find myself reaching for this palette, unfortunately. So I do think I'm gonna pass this one on. This Makeup Revolution palette is their professional eyeshadow palette in neutrals versus neutrals. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by neutrals versus neutrals. Um, um, it is a really pretty palette. Palette. It gives you some really pretty sort of peachy shades. Once again, this is one of those palettes where the mattes perform really admirably and you really have no complaint with the mattes and the palette at all. Nice peachy shadows, nice warm looks. The shimmer shades are okay. I definitely find that they need to be built up or used wet. Part of the reason you're seeing some of the, I don't know, hard panish looking stuff on here is because I have used them with Bix Plus and so they have gotten a little bit of that kind of, I don't wanna say hard pan, cause it's not hard pan, but um, that shade actually performs really beautifully. I forgot that. So I do like this one. I do think it's a peachy palette. I do think I'm gonna keep this one because I do think I have reached for this quite a lot and I do enjoy it. So that one is gonna stay. Okay, BH Cosmetics, I'm gonna just tell you right now, I'm keeping both of these. I really do enjoy them. This is the Shanixo Remix palette that has nine shades on both sides. I did a ton of amazing looks with this. I love how compact it is. I just think it is a fantastic palette. I will link my kind of review and swatches for this palette down below if you really want more detailed swatches of this, but it's lovely. And then this is the Carly Bible Deluxe Edition. I had the original one. I much prefer this one. I think she did a nice job of expanding the line of eyeshadows up here. I love the um, shimmery highlighters down here. I love that she included a white, which allows me to mix some of these shades in highlighters that are just too dark for my skin tone. It allows me to mix them together and get something that is a little bit uh, more pale people person approved, I guess is what I would say. So I really love the fact that she included that uh, down there. And then the quality of these shadows is just, it's spot on. I mean, it's really, really pretty. So I'm definitely 
hanging on to this guy. This is from Hard Candy. This is their Look Pro Eyeshadow Palette in, I'm just calling it Eyeshadow Pro Palette. I thought they were calling this the Rose Gold Palette, but maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Um, this is definitely trying to dupe the Huda Beauty Palette. It's okay, I've played around with it a little bit. Um, the mattes in here aren't bad. I think they've actually got good pigmentation to them. So from a matte perspective, I think they actually did a really good job. These are like 10 bucks, by the way, so incredibly affordable. These shimmers are really kind of chunky. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can, hopefully you guys can see that. They really do need your finger in order to kind of blend them out. And using your brush just does not work with these. So you're either gonna need to get a sort of sponge applicator and use that to apply it. This is not a bad palette. I think it's really fun colors. If you're looking for something that you can pick up that dupes the Huda Beauty palette and you wanna pick it up locally, this is at Walmart, you can definitely do this. I do think I have a dupe for the Huda Beauty palette though that I got from Shop Hush that I like better than this one. So I do think I'm gonna go ahead and pass this one along. This is the Hard Candy Pro Look Matte Eyeshadow Palette. So this came out uh, last year. This is also an all matte palette. When I first saw that this was coming out, my eye was immediately drawn to this bright red and this purple and this sort of periwinkle shade. So I was, I thought, wow, that's a really interesting palette and in general these colors don't disappoint I mean even for super like pastel colors they're pale but they actually do pretty well by by themselves I do think I'm gonna hang on to this one just because it is a nice matte eyeshadow palette and I don't feel like you get a lot of those in the drugstore and I definitely feel like there are tones in here that aren't in any of my mad for matte palettes.